2.6b, Order of Operations with Fractions. The order of operations with fractions is just like when we have whole numbers. First we do parentheses Next, we do exponents. Third, we do multiplication or division. And very last thing is addition or subtraction. You may need some scratch paper to work on. Whoops, let's spell that right. In our first example here, we do have some parentheses, but they are only for grouping. They're just holding that five halves together, showing that that whole thing is to be squared. So that means that we are going to do the exponent first. So we have 9 tenths divided by 12 fifths plus our five halves squared, which is going to give us 5 squared, which is 25 and 2 squared, which is 4, times 1 30th. Now we have division, addition, and multiplication here. And then recall with division and with fractions that we change that to a, a multiplication problem. So we want to do a rewrite here of 9 tenths times 5 twelfths plus our 25 fourths times 1 30th. Now bef we have multiplication, addition, and multiplication. We do our multiplication before addition. And so now we look for common factors before we multiply. 9 and 12 have a common factor of 3, leaving us with 3 and 4. 10 and 5 have a common factor of 5 leaving us with 2 and 1. On our second group here, 25 and 30 have a common factor of 5, leaving us with 5 and 6. So now we are going to multiply. We have 3 times 1, which gives us 3, and 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 5 times 1, which would be 5, and 4 times 6, which would be 24. So I'm now I'm left with addition, and remember that with addition, with fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So our common denominator between 8 and 24 is going to be 24. So we have to multiply 8 by 3 to get 24, so 3 times 3 would be 9. And our second one already has that. So we have 9 plus 5, which gives us 14 24 And then 14 and 24 have a common factor, which we are going to reduce, leaving us with 7 twelfths. In our second example, we have the absolute value symbol. Absolute value symbol acts like parentheses, which means that we need to do inside parentheses first. So we have 8 fifths squared minus 9 tenths. The absolute value, we have 7 minus 9 halves. 
we need a common factor, which is going to be 6. Or not common factor, I'm sorry. Common denominator, which is going to be 6. So we're going to get 3 times 2 to get 6, and so 7 times 2 is 14. We're going to take 2 times 3 to get 6, so that means that 9 times 3 is 27. So we now have 8 fifths squared minus 9 tenths times the absolute value of a negative 13 sixths. So we have 8 fifths squared minus 9 tenths times absolute value of negative 13 six is a positive 13 six. Okay, now we do our exponent next. So we have 8 squared, which should be 64. 5 squared, which should be 25. Minus well, we can do this multiplication part here, too. We have a common factor of 3, leaving us with 2 and 3. We have 3 times 13, which would be 39, and 10 times 2, which would be 20. We need a common factor for 25 and 20. And the common factor for 25 and 20, let's say we got 5 times 5, and 5 times 4. So that means we need 5 times 5 times 4, which is going to be 100. So 25 times 4 gives us 100, so we have 64 times 4, which is going to give us, uh, let's see, 24, 256 minus 5 times 20 gives us 100. So 5 times 39 is going to give us, let's see, 1595. So that will leave us with, well, let's see, 61, 100.